Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Amy Briquette. As we get ready to snuggle under our covers on chilly nights, we're reminded that not everyone in our community has a safe, warm place to call home. During the most recent census, volunteers counted 2,001 homeless people in the Charlotte area. According to the Homeless Services Network of Mecklenburg County, our area needs more than 16,000 affordable rental housing units to end homelessness. Carolina Impact's Sarah Batista introduces us to a man who's now off the streets for good, thanks to McCreesh Place. So Ron, how long have you been living here? About seven months. And how's it going so far? Love it. As you can see, it's just real quiet. Come on in. For Ron Hartzell, this 100 square foot room is home. This is home, sweet home. Home, sweet home. Yeah. So how are you feeling not being on the street anymore? You, you, you cannot imagine. After spending years sleeping under bridges, in shelters, and on doorsteps, the 59-year-old says he finally feels settled. How has your life changed since you've been here? It's night and day. This room, complete with a bed, television, and closet, is his safe haven, tiny but his. The room is one of 90 units in McCreesh Place, a housing complex operated by the nonprofit organization Supportive Housing Communities. Pamela Jefferson is the executive director. Supportive Housing Communities is an organization that offers permanent supportive housing to men, women, and families who are homeless and are living with at least one disability. You know, what are you going to do? Ron fit the criteria. He was homeless and struggling with clinical depression when a local business owner saw him sleeping on a porch and connected him with McCreesh Place. He's not shy about sharing his story. Before losing everything, Ron says he was at the top of his game, playing basketball internationally in his 20s. Life was good. We lived in a home on 73 acres of land that we were renting to buy. But things began to crumble shortly after a friend, a businessman, introduced him to another lifestyle much darker than the one Ron was familiar with. He said, you don't look good, you need to relax, you know, rain and stuff like that. And so he gave me a cigarette, except it was a glass cigarette. And I thought, boy, that's odd. And he lit it for me, and it was crack cocaine. Well, I was bipolar one, diagnosed in January, February of 97, and got immediately addicted. At first, he reveled in the excitement of his new life and his new drug of choice. Immediate high. It just goes to your brain immediately. It only lasts 20 or 30 seconds. $20 for 20 or 30 seconds. How stupid is that? Not a nice word, but it's true. His addiction cost him everything he had worked for. And by the time he turned 45, Ron was homeless. Lost everything, home, wife, children, friends. Everything I owned was thrown away. Uh, got evicted and you got it after two weeks. And so I was walking the streets with just these clothes on like this and a sweatshirt and a ball cap. Uh, he was spending a lot of time going to emergency rooms. Uh, he was calling an ambulance sometimes several times a week. Um, and in fact, when he came here, uh, some of the emergency pers personnel thought he had died because they were they were used to him. Residents at McCreesh Place have an average income of $8,200 a year and must pay 30% of their income towards rent. Jefferson says it's much less expensive to have the homeless community in safe housing. So for every dollar we spend to have someone in stable housing, the taxpayers spend $4 uh, if they are on the street because of all of the other emergency taxpayer funded services that, that they utilize. And often it's just to have a safe place to sleep at night and get a, and get a meal. Jeffson says residents at McCreesh Place get help with managing their health issues, must be drug and alcohol free, and can attend monthly activities like Coffee Talk, which focuses on current events. The building of community and the building of friendships and the building of trust becomes really important. Sometimes homeless people become kind of invisible. James Joyner Jr. has lived at McCreesh Place for 10 years after spending years living on the streets battling schizophrenia and depression. Before, when I first moved there, I was kind of like, you know, like down, depressed. But now I see myself, you know, the sky's the limit. I think I ain't doing anything. Now he's working on getting into culinary school. Ron is just as optimistic about his own future 
He's been sober for more than a year and just recently received these pictures of his teenage children who he hasn't seen in four years. Precious? Oh, worth a billion dollars. And for her to, uh, send me those uh, photos was unbelievable. He's healthy and happy, ready to begin the uphill climb towards rebuilding his life one hopeful step at a time. For Carolina Impact, I'm Sarah Batista reporting. Thanks, Sarah. It's always nice to hear success stories like his. Well, last year, supportive housing communities served 228 people. That's a 71 percent increase over the year before. To find out more about supportive housing communities and ways to help, we've got a link posted next to this story on our Carolina Impact page at PBS.